me and my crew were doing our event called Bridges in Hollywood. Um, it was about 2 a.m., clubs closed. And I told the homies, yo, watch my crate, I'll be right back. And in my crate, I had gems, like just gems that I've searched for for years to find. Ten minutes later, I turn around, my crate's gone. I was in shock. You know, it's like I say there's three things that are some of the worst things that a human could do to, to another human. One is murder. Second is, you know, a father not taking care of his child. And the third is somebody stealing your records. You know what I'm saying? So somebody jacked my records. This is Adrian Young representing Soul Temple Records and Wax Poetics, and you are now tuned in to Crate Diggers. We're at the Artform Studio. Me and my business partner, Patrick Washington, combined our collections to create a record store that was based on The Break, which is a hip hop store. So we have a hip hop section, we got you know the psych section, we got the experimental section, and we basically combined our collections to, to create this store. One of my mantras is basically, I don't like to collect trash. You know, I'm not that dude that has a whole bunch of records that I'm never gonna listen to. So basically, you know, in my collection here at the shop, we like to just try, try our best to keep the cream of the crop type stuff. And just, you know, try to keep it, you know, stuff that I actually wanna hear or somebody actually might want to buy, you know, opposed to just the uh, whack-ass <laughs> 50 cent record, you know, that nobody cares about. We organize a store for diggers. Now, this is where we live, this is where we keep our combined collections, and I actually keep my personal collection down here. So when we come in the store, we're playing our records, playing our collections, I like to just pull my own stuff out. Some of the gems we have here, this Ennio Morricone. Ennio Morricone is one of my favorite composers. Now, when you listen to this, you're listening to the seeds of Wu-Tang and the seeds of Portishead because of the compositional styles. These European composers were asked to make soulful music for the films of Europe of the time. So these classically trained composers were listening to the Marvin Gaye's, the Curtis Mayfields, and reinterpreting them with harpsichords, with strings, with oboes. When you hear boom, 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 they were doing that. It's hip hop. Hip hop jumped on that, especially RZA. It jumped on that and just took it to the next level. Portishead jumped on that, took it to the next level. But if you want to find the source, Look up old European cinema. My first memories of music has to be when I was maybe three, four years old, having a Sesame Street record player and just getting the little plastic Sesame Street records. And uh, that's where my vinyl collection started, I, I guess you could say. But as far as real, real vinyl, my first record I ever got was the Michael Jackson Thriller record. And I remember I got it on Christmas. My brother got the Prince record, The Purple Rain, and I got Thriller. And I guess because of that, I always liked Michael Jackson more than Prince. Um, this is the piece I did on Wax Poetics, when I, and I was extremely stoked when I saw it on Jazzy Jeff's version of Crate Diggers. It blew my mind. But this record represents the art form. And what this record is, it's a record that is full of breaks. It's supposed to be a kind of record that a record collector would find and want to sample and make music off of. And that's what this record is for. And I hope that's why Jazzy Jeff had it displayed on Craig Diggers. Okay. This Jack Dijonette album, The Sorcery, this album was given to me from House Shoes. He appreciated the, the music I made, I appreciated the music he makes, and his knowledge as a collector. This is a really dope record, dope drum breaks, everything. And when I came back to the shop and played it, my mind was blown. It just really means a lot that somebody that is a producer, DJ on the level that he is, would give me something like this. It's, that is pretty hard to find. Really took it to heart when he gave this to me. I've never dug with, with RZA, but basically uh, we talk about records a lot when we're together. 
My thing with Rizzo, I'd always ask, how did you find this or how did you find that? And he was an avid digger. He loves records. He's hip hop. You know, he DJs. And all the, you know, the Kung Fu stuff, the Wu-Tang stuff, that's really real. You know, they're really knowledge seekers. And there's a lot of knowledge in those movies, you know, about life and how to think and all that stuff. So even when they're talking, you know, about wisdom and all that, they talk about a lot of stuff that they talk about in the movies. Because in the movies, like I said, there's a lot of knowledge. So it's not a gimmick. This is a really how they are. I was listening to him and Jesse talk last night, and they're talking to the show like, I don't know what the f I was talking about, but I get it. I don't know what y'all talking about, but I get it. There's one reason why I look for Stax 45s. And that reason is to find copies of After the Laughter by Wendy Renee. After the Laughter is a song that Riz has sampled for tears. And when I heard that break, I was like, God damn, I need to find the original. Not only was I lucky enough to find the original, but I got it signed by Riz himself. It says, to Adrian, keep it soulful. Riz Wu-Tang, and he signed the, the record as well. These go for hundreds of dollars, regardless of what the condition are in, because it's extremely rare. Let's see. Uh, the intro to the clan in the front, when they're like, Wu-Tang, killer bees, we on a swarm, ba boom ba boom 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 This is the break. And it's by New Birth, which is a, a definitely a group that I love a lot, Rizzo loves a lot. We talk about this group a lot. It's from the song Honey Bee. So at the beginning of this track, you hear a bunch of bees swarming, like the killer bees. And then you hear the bass line, ba boom Ba boom, 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 ba boom, boom. Wu Tang killer bees, one swan. That's where they got that from. One of the most obscure samples that I used prior to becoming exclusively live was from a record called In Search Of. In the late 70s, Le uh, Leonard Niboy had a show that was about the unknown. So it talked about UFOs. Uh, psychics, um, religion, and basically this was a record that was a soundtrack to that television show. The soundtrack sounds like some medieval, dark, psychedelic soul stuff. Hearing a record like that and hearing the kind of music that these people made at that time, you know, inspired me to just say, you know what, I gotta drop this sampler because I want to do stuff like that. I want to compete with them. Savannah Band, Ghostface Break for sure say the ghost on Supreme Clientele. This is one of those albums that we call a fully rideable album. A fully rideable album is a kind of album you could listen to if you're driving from LA to San Francisco, which is like a five hour drive. And you can just keep it on repeat, you don't gotta skip. This is fully rideable. This is my Patty Kim gem. I believe it's Korean. I found this at Cypress College flea market. Got it for two bucks. I have no idea what it's worth but to me it's priceless. If you see a cover that represents what you feel your music represents, you buy it. When I saw this cover, it represented cinema to me. I'm an avid collector of vintage cinema. There's some kind of emotion that this Patty Kim chick is casting with whatever she's doing here. I thought that this might have ill drums and ill bass lines. It does. <laughs> If I'm looking for obscure breaks, I always look for a black dude and a white dude. If I see just a whole bunch of black people, it's gonna probably be cool. If I see a bunch of white people, I gotta look to see how they're dressed. You know what I'm saying? If they're dressed like on, with some ill psychedelic gear, I'm like, all right, you know, I, 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 you know I'm, I'm gonna check that out, I'm gonna cop that because that's probably who I would be if I was a white dude back then. You know, and I try to get that record. If you see a black dude, an Asian dude, and a white dude, you gotta get the record because there's a reason why they came together. And it's usually to do something obscure. Bo Hansen, Attic Thoughts. When I completed my Venice Dawn album in 2000, myself and my Venice Dawn band played at the Whiskey. And an old woman came up to me and said, damn, you guys sound like Bo Hansen. And on stage at that time, I had an ARP 2600 uh, modular synth and I had another monophonic rolling synth and drums and all that stuff. So I said, if somebody from back then sounds like I sound now, I need to, to search that. So Bo Hansen, is, I think he's from Sweden. It's ill drums, ill bass lines, and you record all this on an eight track. 
in some cabin in the hills in Sweden. If you're searching for an album with ill breaks, you see this and you see the artwork, this should be an indicator, because I don't know what the hell's going on here, but something magical's happening. And then if you open up the album, you see an organ. If you see an organ on an album and the guy's not old, buy the album. <sighs> this is my cover section. I always look for cover albums because I love to hear how artists of the times interpolated other people's music. You're looking for a certain sample and then you're hearing how other artists sampled it back then. So I always buy these records with the white chick in the blonde hair. Some, she's always doing something. This is a, so this is one. Let's try to find another one. Uh, White chick, blonde hair. Uh, white chick, blonde hair. So this is my Holy Grail cover album. When I saw the cover, I said, all right, I have no idea what the Astro Musical House of Sagittarius is, but there's something interesting here. I turned it over and I discovered that they had covers. I'm always looking for covers because covers are rare and covers usually have breaks and excellent composition because they're competing with the original. This is the dopest Strawberry Fields Forever cover I've ever heard. And it's a full orchestra playing the Mellotron sounds and everything from Strawberry Fields. The records expanded my mind and showed me the limitations I was confined to by just sampling. Nothing against sampling because I'm actually an advocate of sampling but that made me want to just kind of buy more obscure records and study the compositions and make music like that. Anywhere where I could actually find records, you know, I'll, I'll go. Thrift stores, but I'm that dude, if I go to the thrift store and I see, you know, five Christmas records, I'm out.